Hi everyone, my name's Blythe. I'm here from the tips team with this week's tutorial video. It's May, and this month we are continuing to focus on AI tools to support you with teaching and learning. Today we're going to dive into a tool called eduade.ai. This tool has multiple features to explore, and we're going to zero in on the ones to support you as your teacher assistant, with all of the productivity and efficiency tasks that you need to do. Before we jump into the tool, I wanted to take you to our YouTube channel. Uh, there are quite a few videos and resources catalogued here for you and sorted into different playlists. Be sure to subscribe so that you get our weekly updates. As you enter our channel, you'll notice the After School Tech Tips playlist with all of the weekly videos organized chronologically and matching our themes. And you'll also find an AI playlist with all of the specific videos released over the last couple months uh, about tools and features of AI platforms that you can use to prepare for your teaching assignment. We strive to make just right, just in time learning for you, and we would love to hear your feedback on this channel and how it supports your learning. Speaking of learning, let's go back to the details about EduAid. EduAid is a tool for teachers with an 18 plus age limit. Um, here is a statement from their privacy policy about identifiable information. Um, this is important as we consider what information we provide to these tools and then how the tool is using your information. Many AI tools have the option to not have your data added to the learning model um, and used to continue training the algorithm. Um, in this case, from the statement uh, on the screen, you can see here that EduAid is a teacher-specific tool, and they've taken into account that if you put sensitive data in it, you might need the chance to get it back. Uh, so you can see here that with an email, you can ask to have data removed from your account and then not included uh, in the tool. So I think thought this was important and worth highlighting as you consider the information that you're adding into the tool how you are then modifying the platform, and how then that tool is modifying you and the ways that you are teaching and interacting with your students. Whenever you're using AI tools, there's some big questions to be asking yourself. And so you can ask these of any tool that you're using and come back to them for continuous reflection, independently as well as with your colleagues. As you dive into the FAQ and the privacy policy, you'll find the answers to these um, in that this tool, EduAid, is based off of an AI, or sorry, OpenAI's platform. It is similar to ChatGPT, and then they have a whole document of how it's different. Uh, so be sure to go and find that one. Um, the data was trained by teachers, uh, and so this is a tool made by teachers for teachers, um, and they really put that forward in their messaging. Um, they don't give specifics on how the models are performing, but be sure to read reviews for things like false negatives and false positives. Um, and then uh, they do stipulate in here in that teacher made um, model that they are reviewing the responses regularly. Um, so hopefully that helps you make your decision as you continue to read terms of use and privacy policies prior to investing in any of these AI tools. We're going to go jump into the tool in just a second and have a demo of how to use the teacher assistant features, but also wanted to point out to you more generally about this platform uh, that it can be used to create lesson plans as well as teaching resources and assessments. They boast that they have over 100 different resource types or learning objects that you can use with your students. You can create your own assessments with six different question types um, and you can vary the question difficulty. Uh, you can then expand this accessibility into your classroom for your students um, and translate it into over 15 languages. Let's go have a peek. So I've navigated to eduade.ai. I'm going to go ahead and log in with Google as I've already created my account with my EPSB sign-in. Here on the left-hand side, you can see I have options for content creation, assistant tools, that's where we're diving in, but there's also a feedback bot, a chat bot, an assessment builder, and your history. 
We'll come back to the history and have a look at how we can iterate through some different versions. But for now, let's go and check into the assistant features. Everywhere through the tool, you can set the grade level of the audience that you are speaking to. So I'm going to stick to a grade six to eight level. And you can see here that the next thing in line is I've selected some favorites. So if there's some templates down below here that I think I'll use often, I can go ahead and click the star update for student update. Uh, and then it will always be at the top for me when I first come into the platform. When I'm first sorting through and finding ones that I think will be useful, um, I've got three categories. Professional duties, those are kind of those uh, everyday tasks that can take some time, uh, but can also be uh, very helpful. You've got accessibility tools, so these are activities or suggestions of uh, strategies to support students. And then the last category here of wellness. So kind of some team building activities, um, icebreakers, so intros, um, all the way down to kind of empathy discussion uh, prompts. And all the way through each one of these categories, you can see there's a prompt uh, generator here down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and favorite the digital citizenship lesson, uh, one of my favorite topics to talk about and select that as an activity to work on. So whatever activity is highlighted um, becomes what the uh, prompt generation tool will give me. So I've given a, a really basic prompt um, for a lesson plan. Uh, with interactive options for my grade six audience uh, where they're focused on information literacy and deep fakes. So one way that I've used this tool to iterate and learn about prompting is to then generate um, the response using my own prompt. So to do so I would click on add to workspace. Okay and then my workspace opens up here on the right hand side. I can adjust the prompting area over to give myself more workspace and so here I can see the first iteration of this lesson plan. All the main parts, sometimes. When I click on the rocket ship, I have some transform options that appear, uh, ways that I can edit this text. So kind of like some built-in further prompting here. I can edit it myself with the pencil tool. I can then copy it so that I can put it into a different document or I can close it. If I scroll all the way to the bottom of this response, you'll see in purple here, uh, these are suggestions for other content that might support this response. Uh, so again, another option for uh, suggested prompting. What I'm going to do now is toggle this closed. Uh, so this becomes part of my running history for the day and then also long term history searchable from here on the left hand menu for comparison. Uh, so I'm going to scroll back here to my prompt. And this time I'm going to hit enhance. It's going to re-wordsmith and adjust my prompt uh, to improve its accuracy. And uh, in this case, I'll then hit add to workspace again and regenerate it. I've done this a few times and just compared the two responses uh, to see which one matches and then use the suggested prompt to improve my prompt accordingly. Okay, and then again, it gives different suggestions again down here at the bottom. Sometimes the suggestions are good, sometimes they're not. So here I am uh, in my history on the left hand menu where I can see a number of different responses that I've generated uh, using various prompts for different activities. Uh, they're all dated and they're in the order that I generated them in. Um, the nice thing here is that I can go back and review different responses um, and then learn from my own prompting um, and continue to refine uh, my use of this tool uh, and getting better and better resources. 
Uh, I can always go back into my history um, and either go right back into the workspace, uh, I can make a copy of it, or I can go ahead and delete it uh, and keep this workspace clean. That was a quick tour of eduade.ai. You could see from the intro there that there's many other features of this tool to have a look at. We just glanced through how to use the assistant side of things uh, for wellness, uh, for efficiencies, and for accessibility ideas. I hope this was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check in next week for another tutorial video. Bye for now.